Hi everybody! Just a short video today, well hopefully, I was asked by a couple of people on Instagram how I was actually doing the method of using super tips as watercolour in my colouring books, so I'm just going to quickly go through that today. I originally found out about the idea through A Cluttered Life on YouTube, so I will link her channel and her original video down below so you can go and have a look at those if you want to. She really does like using markers, she's got um, a video with like 10 techniques for using water-based markers, it's really interesting so I recommend that. Um, but yeah, I'll just go through the one method of hers that I was using. Um, the main point to make is that it doesn't work on every kind of paper. I've only found a couple of my books that it will actually work in. It works really well in these Blue Angel books. Blue Angel. And that would be this one, Dreams of Dragons and Dragon Kin, and the Jasmine Beckett Griffith books. It works really well in those. It seems to work in this book, judging from the little test I did on like the beginning page. And it works all right in the older issues of Colouring Heaven. Not so much the new ones, but they did change the paper. I actually looked up the date. It was in March of 22. They changed the paper to, for a lighter weight paper because of an increase in prices. And they wanted to keep the magazine the same price, but, you know, give everyone a value for money. So they changed the paper to be slightly lighter weight. And that doesn't work as well for using the super tips as watercolour. So that's from... It changed from Colouring Heavy Heaven issue 88, Collection issue 41, and the Junior issue number 7. Anything after that, it wouldn't work as well. But this is one of the older ones, and I have done a little, um, a little practice in there. You can see that I used those two colours. But yeah, the, this is the older issue, and yeah, it does work in those ones. And how you would check... If you go to a little, the front page, any page, you're not too bothered about do a little test. You just do a little scribble. And then go in with your damp brush. Take off most of the water. Just You just want to see if this super tip will dissolve. You can see that it's dissolving, turning into the watercolour. So yeah, it works on that paper. Not as well as it does in the Blue Angel book, but yeah, it works on that paper. And that's how you test. It seems to work on paper that's kind of smooth so that the pigment from the super tip doesn't soak straight into the paper you can wet it and then kind of move it around that's how you do it then that's how you test it does work in that book which i wasn't expecting and it works in these blue angel books and um, i will demonstrate on an actual picture i've picked one out here it kind of doesn't fit with my theme for the month of sci-fi but i'm going to try and do a bit of a galaxy effect so Hopefully we can make a bit of allowances there. And there he is. This is the Sky Watcher from Dreams of Dragons and Dragon Kin by Raven Phelan. Just to give you a brief kind of showing of how this technique works. I have put a couple of pieces of scrap paper behind them. Just in case. But it doesn't seem to soak through on this paper very much. So I'll just pop one of those out and test a few colours here because I looked up the original art for this painting and it does seem to have been done in watercolour which is quite good and he seems to be the, the big kind of dragon type beastie here he's blue with like little yellow highlights on his main face and down here there's a kind of galaxy effect coming from like yellowy orange going through a little bit of purple and up to black so I'm going to try and stick with that for mine but I'm just going to experiment and see what happens see how we can go and you can test your colors out on a spare piece of paper see if you can find the right one that you're wanting um they will go a little bit lighter when you do dissolve them so kind of bear that in mind and i get a couple of shades to try and uh, I want to start with this skin because I want to show you how you can go back into it once it's dry and do some more layers. And I'll start with this blue here. I'll start with this light blue here. Just, you don't have to be neat because you're going to go in and dissolve this anyway. So put in a little bit of this blue. It seems to come around there from the original painting that I looked at.
you don't have to be neat. It seems to work better if you're not, actually, because then you don't have, like, the if any of the pen marks do show through, you don't have the regular kind of lines. Let's take that for an example. And then all you do is you wet your brush. It's got a little tub of water there. You just wet your brush in there. And then knock off a bit of the excess water. And then just go in and... You can see that, that that ink, that pigment, just dissolves into the watercolour and it makes some really lovely kind of effects, i found anyway. Like like actual watercolour, you can spread it out with the with the water to, get, to make those lovely kind of stain effects. Like I've told you that, I love them. I love it when the watercolour does that. There we go, just giving a bit of extra water around the edge to allow that ink to spread out a little bit. Give me some nice... Give me some nice staining, a sort of feathering effect. And you can see it making kind of paint effects there. As I said, the, the highlights on his cheeks are not that colour, that's luminous yellow. <laughs> we might be able to work that in. Oh, this kind of yellow, so we'll put a little bit of that in and see if we can get those to blend into each other, maybe. Oh, yeah, that's working. It's making a kind of greeny colour blending, just like watercolour. And you can always go back over this. You can shade it with pencil. You can go back over it with um, more marker, more, more different colours, more darker colours. Just be careful the amount of water you're adding because some the colouring heaven paper doesn't take it as well as this paper does, so you have to be a bit more careful with the amount of water you're using there. Just try and blend out that mean mean lot of ink in the middle there. That's how his face is in the original artwork. It, like I said, it's done in watercolour, so it has these lovely kind of blending and staining effects going on, which I really like. And while that's drying, I'll move on and do another little bit. On these, you can do exactly the same effect. Move blue. A little bit of the yellow and then go in with the paintbrush dabbing off the excess water there and just activating those so they turn into the kind of like watercolour sort of pink going on and that's really good just like that. And for this kind of starting from the galaxy down here, it starts from like an orangey colour moving through brown or a little bit of purple. So let's see if we can make the same kind of galaxy that we made for our Draco loop. Our little bunny picture, which is further down. Let me just show you. Has anybody forgotten? This is the original one I put on Instagram when people were asking how I did this. So this is the effect I'm trying to get the same effect at the bottom of the galaxy there. And that's just how I did it, by scribbling and then going in with the water and blending it all out. It does work out quite bright, obviously, if you use the brighter colours. You could always shade it with your pencils afterwards if you wanted to darken it down. I said don't be neat. It seems to work better if you're not because then it doesn't look so irregular. Going with a bit a few browns here. Perfect. 
purple. There was a bit of purple kind of creeping in in the actual artwork, so let's see if we can add some, see how that works. Just diving right in here, I haven't experimented. <laughs> this is the experiment. And maybe working in that darker brown so we can make our way up to black. And yeah, it does look pretty terrible right now, but hopefully this will all bleed into each other, give us some nice watercolour effects once we add the water. You can use a thick part of the nib because you don't have to be so neat. But trying to keep within the lines just so we don't go over his face and cause ourselves problems. Okay. There we are, let's see what we can do with that. As you can see here, yeah, the colours are all starting to blend into each other. If you start from the lightest end, because as you're working you're pushing the colour, pushing the colour forward, so you don't really want to be taking the dark into the light, you want the light to go into the dark to try and give us that nice gradient effect. And there you can see where it's all starting to bleed into each other. That was a heck of a lot of water I just put on there. That does happen, you can just soak it up. And hopefully make it into part of the other side. Purple isn't blending quite as well as I would like it to. Let's add a little bit of extra water there, try and blend those edges out. Get those nice kind of feathery edges. Yeah, this purple really hasn't blended as well as I hoped it would, but we can go over the top. Once that is dry, we can go over the top with extra layers. See if we can help it out a bit. Oh, I do like how that's starting to run there. That looks really good. There we go, we'll leave that alone for now. And I'll show you that you can once it's dry. It's still a little bit down, but I think we can go over it. You can add darker colours, just like you go in and shade with pencil. You can go in and add a different colour. Go around these little scales here. A little bit of shading around his jaw there. So I'll wash our brush. We don't want any of the black bleeding. We don't want any of the black bleeding into that. So let's wash our, wash our brush out and just blend in this blue around the edge. A bit more water. And add a little bit 
around the edge, just to feather the edges, try and get it to bleed out, make some more of oh, these lovely kind of feathery effects. But basically we just let it do its own thing. It is quite hard to control. You can never quite predict how it's going to work out. Like down here, this has not worked how exactly how I wanted it to at all. But I'll go back into that and see if we can fix it. Another method you can use if you want a bit more control for these smaller kind of areas here is to use plate or um, anything non-porous like a palette or anything like that. But I just use this little kind of side plate here. And instead of putting your pen straight onto the paper, you can scribble, scribble a bit on the plate there or your palettes or whatever you're using. Just something non-porous that the ink won't soak into. Then you can dampen your brush and pick this colour up like paint and use it in a more kind of controlled way if that's the effect that you were going for. Like that. Add a bit of a darker yellow there. Make things more controlled like that. You can predict a bit more where things are going to go if you're actually using your brush to put the colour on instead of letting it do its own thing and just spread around. And you could even, as our little experiment down here didn't quite work, we could even go back into that with the same kind of method, use our darker brown, strip on the plate, take a little bit of that, and go over the bits where we're not exactly happy with what's going on. This is where we had too much water and we we sopped it all up so that's a bit of a bit of a lighter area so we might keep that and might add to the galaxy effect. And again you can dampen the edges, try and get that feathering happening, get the colours blending together. That's a little bit better. Maybe we should go in with the purple like that as well. better. Let's just see if that can blend into the brown a little bit more by adding a little touch of water. Maybe need to dull down that orange a little bit more, so I'll go with the lighter brown. Try and dull down the orange just a little. Open the edges and all that put into each other. So basically, yeah, that's how do this technique. Just don't add too 
too many wet layers on top of each other do let it dry at least mostly before you go back on top otherwise the paper will start to come apart and, and you'll get little dots and stuff happening which may not be exactly what you're going for once it's dry you can also try and reactivate the edges blend those out a little bit more you're not after such a harsh line again you can go back in and work that with pencil There we go, our brown and our purple are working a lot better now. And that's it. That's how you do the technique of using the Super Tips as watercolour. And as long as you test your paper before you start to see if they will actually dissolve, you should be able to get the same kind of effect in your own books. To do the stars, what I was doing was little dots of white gel pen. The paper is damp, it will hopefully start to soak in slightly itself. And then getting a very, very, very slightly damp brush. And spreading that white ink around to make it kind of a a shining halo around the star. Yeah, that one's worked quite well. I make that purple like a bit of a nebula coming through the other side of our little beastie. I've gone over the edge slightly there, but Hopefully I'll be able to colour that, cover that with a white gel pen. That's maybe a little bit of a lighter brown. So it looks as if that kind of galaxy effect is carrying on behind them. I'll we'll blend that purple into our black. And add a little bit of a light grey, I think. Where these stars are, see if we can give those a bit of a glow. Bit of an experiment, not sure exactly how well that worked. 
let's give it a try. It's also quite a lot of water there, hoping for some more nice blending effects to go on. Looking up a little bit of that around the star, making look as if it's glowing.
okay before my video cuts out there and before i get even more carried away <laughs> thanks for watching everybody hope you enjoyed this tutorial see you in future videos bye